Alright guys, uh, All or Nothing just released. I want to take a quick second to talk to you guys about the patch notes, which are not actually that wild, but have a lot of cool things to do with fractals. And also go over the release page. So, there's not going to be any spoilers in this video whatsoever, despite the fact that the release is now out. If you look at my world map, you'll see a new level 80 icon at the Delgimor front. The map art has changed a reasonable amount. I'm curious where the entrance is and what exactly is going on with this. Uh, but we'll get to all of that in due time. I just want to talk about the patch notes today, so don't worry. Uh, we, of course, also, when logging in, have the new episode available to play all or nothing. And I will say, uh, based on some of the tweets the devs have been throwing out and stuff, it seems like really big things might be happening this patch. Well, so let's start here with the release page. I can't believe the devs have been doing these for however long, and I totally forgot that they were a thing. I mean, totally crazy, right? But uh, yeah, all or nothing. This is up on the website right now. It's got a bit of additional information. January 8th, Kate has a lead on Glint's legacy and wants to ask Ogden Stone Healer some questions, but the Dermon Priory isn't exactly welcoming her with open arms. I wonder why that might be. Meet her in Lornar's Pass to seek Ogden's counsel. Uh, so we're starting in a core region. They say that there's a new upgradable weapon set, which we can arm ourselves with weapon forged from the brand crystal. We obviously already saw. That's dragon blood stuff. The new fractal, Siren's Reef. Shipwrecks, a tropical island, and pirates. You know what that means. Treasure and ghosts. Lots of ghosts. A screenshot we haven't seen before. Uh, the legendary longbow, Faris. We've done a ton of discussion on. The new mastery, Bond of Faith. Unlock the ability to launch yourself off your mount and into the air and then a ton of screenshots uh, sort of uh, going into some extra details. This is the final boss of the Fractal, for example. Uh, also, consistently, they're showing Aureen in a lot of the banner art. And I know on Twitter here, they did show this other screenshot of Kaith in an area that looks a bit like the Dragon's Lair, but also could potentially be somewhere in the mists. I don't really know. Uh, so that's as close to spoilers we'll get. Let's now have a look over at the forums uh, for the actual patch notes and see what they're saying. We're well, Living World, All or Nothing, as her allies fortify themselves for the final confrontation with Kragatoric, Aureen prepares to face against her greatest fear, her role in Tyria's future. You remember, Aureen didn't appear in the trailer, so there was speculation that maybe she wasn't going to have much to do with the patch, or what she was going to do in the patch was so important that it doesn't appear in the trailer. But this, this tagline at least seems to suggest there's going to be a lot to do with her. Uh, they say, the new legendary longbow, Faris, call down pillars of cosmic energy and conjure arrows made of pure light with Faris, a new legendary longbow with mysterious origins. Now, the mysterious origins, I talked about real world inspiration and kind of relevance with the name Pharos. Uh, essentially what we think this is is a twist on Pharos, which is kind of the idea of a big lighthouse, right? A glowing beacon of light. So, uh, Mysterious Origins, does that tie to the patch somehow? You'll, of course, remember stuff like the Shining Blade tying into that patch. The uh, Legendary Hammer tied into its release. Does this one somehow? Its creator claims they were guided in the weapons construction by a previously undiscovered entity, but it seems more likely that this bow has humbler if no less unconventional beginnings. Innings. Very strange. Uh, I'm wondering if they'll go back to doing more detailed lore outside of the game for the legendaries as well. You remember they did, what was it? Was it Ippos this season? That was fantastic. We don't really see much more there on the patch notes though. So, Fractors. Really, that's what this video is mostly going to be about because they've condensed an entire bunch of new story, map, currencies, achievements, you know, like a couple of months of gameplay for us if you're going for all the AP and stuff into a single line as they so often do. A lot of the cool features like maybe new books and new novelties and stuff like that uh, we'll likely have to dig into in future productions. Instead, they're going to talk to us about fractals. So there is the new fractal Siren's Reef. Shipwrecked and surrounded by an army of ghost pirates, players must work with a crew to break the curse that grips the Isle of Siren's Reef. Wouldn't it be, this be cool if we're like a famous crew as well? Like maybe we're on the revenge of the Capricorn or something? That'd be amazing. Um, so yeah, there is that. But then there's a lot of general changes because of instabilities. And I have to say, I haven't played Fractals consistently for at least half a year, maybe longer. But this really excites me to get back into them. So very quick recap. Instabilities are the passive effects that continuously change and affect your experience each fractal island. So even though it may be your hundredth time beating the Molten Facility Fractal, uh, each time you go in, if there's a different set of insta instabilities, that changes the gameplay somehow. I've always loved the concept. 
Uh, fractal players tend to be pretty grumpy about it, I think, and pretty picky and pretty whiny. I'm not necessarily in that uh, category. I think that they can add a lot of flavor, even if they are frustrating to deal with. Uh, so the devs have to be very careful about it. Whenever they've made a change here, there's been like a very uh, loud minority that have cried about it. So let's see what they go with. I'm not going to give you some massive review since I haven't even been in Fractals for ages, but this looks cool. Okay, so first of all, existing instabilities that have changed. So first of all, Adrenaline Rush. Uh, this is what makes enemies enraged when you get them very low. The idea is that they have a last really dangerous phase, um, even if they were just a normal boss. So, when enraged, enemies deal 150% increased damage while they're low on health, but they deal 20% less damage when not enraged now. So, I think in order for instabilities to feel like fun shake-ups on gameplay instead of just penalties, what the devs have done is said, okay, every instability will have an upside to it as well. Or a lot of them will have upsides. So now you get to the benefit of, you know, they're all a lot weaker for the vast majority of the fight. And you might actually be happy to see Adrenaline Rush on there. Um, overall, I, I, I think that they don't want to mess with the, the difficulty balance, but they just kind of want to make you feel like it's not all negatives when you see an instability, which is an okay idea to maybe uh, placate those more upset with the system. Afflicted. Outgoing resistance duration is increased by 50%, but enemies apply random conditions. So you get the frustration of random condies, but you know that if you throw more resistance onto your build, it will last a really long time now. Uh, there's interesting ramifications on this in that, like, you could overcap resist duration and stuff, which maybe we can get into. But, okay, you got Flux Bomb. You are periodically affected by the Anomaly's Flux Bombs. I've always liked that instability. But now it applies to both allies and enemies. Telegraphing, I'm very curious about on that. But enemies can be Flux bombed hamstrung low health increasingly slows your movement but as an upside now endurance regenerates faster so you can dodge more which obviously will get around the slower movement last laugh and and by the way that has like uh impact on stuff like mirage does that cap with vigor and all other things uh, last laugh enemies explode upon dying if not stunned but stunned enemies apply protection and stability to nearby players so now you can go for a heavy CC lock kind of game where you get them stunned and you've got a ton of stab and protection, which saves you from the knockback of Last Laugh. If this isn't done right, it could just completely eliminate this entire idea of this because there's so much CC rolling around anyway. You know, one CC on one target is going to give all that stab around. So if I use an AOE CC, am I not going to give like five might to my entire team? Uh, sorry, five might, five stability to my entire team and like none of these will go through. Anyway, uh, no pain, no gain. Enemies receive boons as they get attacked, but if you strip boons, you steal their life. They're all properly paired, right? Social awkwardness has now been changed to players will be pushed away from one another. That sounds great. Uh, and I wonder how annoying that will be. Toxic trail. Enemy. And I, this was something I think one of the devs on the forums was talking about wanting to do for like ages, months, years, maybe even now at this point. Uh, toxic trail. Enemies leave the paths of poison behind them, but blocking a toxic trail attack will absorb it and cleanse the condition. So you run around shield blocking as a warrior, like cleaning up all the floor. That sounds very fun as well. Uh, Misconvergence. Now, if you don't remember what this is, this is where Moss Man can appear in any of the other fractals or the, the random tendrils could appear in any of the other fractals. You know, the, the mist closer together. Well, they've checked. They've ordered this. They say that repeated spawns have been eliminated. So I guess you won't get like Moss Man twice in a row anymore, I think is what that's saying. And they've also added two new possible spawns. This is great. I've always thought Misconvergence, they could just regularly each patch, like add a new possible thing to it and just keep expanding the pool of possibilities. Maybe that's a silly idea because it gets a bit wild and ridiculous. But they've added two new spawns, which I'm super happy to see. One of them is an ally. Ally. Uh, I don't know what um, what the ally does. They don't say. But also they've got an abomination that will attack ally and enemy alike. Kind of like that Guild Wars 1 thing where you're a minion monster. You die and all your minions become like neutral mobs. Well, you get a neutral A-bomb that runs around. This is cool. You know, the upsides with it. I wonder how good this ally is. If it's too good, it might feel a bit gimmicky. So we'll see. Not only that, alright, that's just changes to existing ones. They've also given us a bunch of new ones. And it gets way better, guys. Right, check this out. I love the sound of these. Obviously, they could all end up really frustrating. But here we go. Boon Overload. Each boon on a player increases incoming strike damage by 5%. That sounds painful as hell, by the way. But outgoing boon duration is increased. That sounds like a, a tough one uh, at first glimpse. Uh, frailty. Players are smaller 
and have 33%, 30% less health, but move faster. So we all like run around like minis almost. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Outflank. I love how there's a visual component that is somewhat unnecessary, but increases like the flavor and the, the wild factor. Uh, outflanked. Foes within a range of 300 do th triple damage when attacking from behind, but only 75% damage when attacking head on. So think if you get outflanked, and you get uh, adrenaline rush. Enemies are going to be doing barely any damage to you if you have them in the right circumstance. But if you turn your back on an enraged foe in this scenario, they're going to like absolutely destroy you. It sounds brilliant, even with the you know mundane throwaway attacks. Um, slippery slope. All surfaces are slick. Outgoing stability duration is increased by 20%. So slick is like what we see in Super Adventure Box when you're sliding against like uh, currents. We also see it in various living world areas now. Heart of Thorns, I think, had it too. Uh, one of the slopes near Tarir in the Auric Basin. Several places in the expansion have had it. I, I would actually be interested if the new map from All or Nothing has some icy slick ice surfaces. But everywhere in Fractals are now slick. That sounds very cool. Um, stick together. Take 60% increased damage when you're not in range of 300 of an ally. But if you are in range of an ally, take 20% reduced damage. 300 radius is not actually that high. And this is probably my favorite one on the whole list, I think, actually, in terms of how it alters your gameplay. Not necessarily builds, but your gameplay to stick together much more aggressively. Uh, that sounds fun. Sugar Rush increases player movement speed. This is actually a Guild Wars 1 kind of eating too much uh, sweet treats mechanic that they're re-implementing, I guess, or nodding back to. Increases player movement speed and attack speed by 15%. Elite and lower enemies' movement speed and attack speed increases by uh, 35%. I don't actually know. This phrasing is confusing me. Are they saying that elite uh, tier mobs and lower mobs... Also, so basically, everyone just attacks really fast and does animations really quickly. I wonder how that compounds with quickness. If that doesn't stack with quickness, it kind of doesn't mean much, does it? <laughs> um, but that sounds like a dangerous one as well, actually. Animation speeding up in that way. Uh, birds. Birds of prey periodically assault players. Dodging transfers the birds to nearby enemies for four seconds. That we're only going to know how fun that is from playing, but on paper it looks exciting. Vengeance. When enemy die, enemies die, they enhance nearby foes with multiple boons. It doesn't apply to elite foes and strip enemy boons to inflict them with weakness. So mass weakness access on this. So uh, Fractals could be really easy with Vengeance if you're just putting a lot of weakness out. We'll see. But I like how much incentive there is for boon strip in several of these. Uh, and finally, we bleed fire. Enemies create flaming missiles when damaged, and incoming condition duration is reduced by 20%. So lots of burn damage coming against us there, and again, actually have to play it to see. If you guys are interested, I'll definitely do a full-up video where I do some fractals and check out the new instabilities. Get some footage of each one, do an actual uh, review of them later. Uh, but that sounds very exciting and makes me want to play fractals. That's cool. There are some changes to specifics as well. Aetherblade, Deepstone, and Twilight. Two of them being new, obviously. So, running through very quickly. Aetherblade, the number of consoles used to disable the grid traps now aligns with the number of consoles used to disable the spinning laser traps. Okay. Adjusted the activation threshold of laser traps. Okay. Deepstone, added warning rings to the Deepstone Sentinels tornadoes. Reduced the defiance bar for the Deepstone Sentinels wind sprites on tier 1 and 2, which is nice because that thing can be hard, kind of hard to quickly break bar at those lower tiers. Uh, and is a very punishing mechanic for the lower level players who will be in those tiers. Uh, falling or being dropped from the platform at the Deepstone Sentinel will now put Fractal Tier 1 and Tier 2 players into downed instead of killing them. So way more forgiving. Uh, they adjusted the functionality of the Voices Shadow Siphon. The Defiance Bar now scales with tiers and the barrier will drop when the Defiance Bar is broken. I love how much this is to do with scaling, right? Which is what Fractals really should be thriving on. People should feel very comfortable to play even new and old Fractals at a low tier. They, they are for noobs and it's perfectly fine and safe to go and play those. Uh... Reduce the number of safe falls that are available in the voices chamber. Tier 4 of the fractal has been reduced to 1 from 3. Tier 3 has been reduced to 2 from 4. And tier 1 and 2 have been reduced to 4. So I'm curious about that. Uh, then we got Twilight Oasis Fractal. Reduce the health of the veterans by 30%. Remove one of the Sun Spear Sand Binders that was required to open the gate to High Priestess Amala. I think that's the idea of this is speeding that fractal up a little bit, basically. Oh, and then underground facilities. Sorry. Creatures will no longer appear near the singularity once Rabsovich has been defeated. So I guess that's nice. Not that I really have much experience with buying heads with that. Moving over to general world changes. Uh, I wish there was something more exciting. This is often one of my favorite parts of the patch notes. It's not so much this time. 
Uh, the general setting for music volume in sound options has been adjusted to match that of other category defaults. It is recommended that players click restore defaults in the sound options panel to update the setting. So, going in game here, just so that you can see, if I click restore defaults, I think music by default used to be lower. I think that's what the default was. And now it's up here. I... I don't even know where to begin as to why this was a change or why this was on their mind or whatever. I guess I like that they are still messing with the slides and stuff because there's so many amazing improvements that could be done with the sliders and what is considered what kind of effect and whatnot. Uh, so, yay, they've been looking at least. Let's hope that that's a prelude to some bigger, actually important changes. But, yeah, music now is higher. Great. It's one of the most nothing updates I think I've seen in years. The next two are actually kind of interesting. Tooltips for items stored in material storage will now show how many are in your material storage. And tooltips for items also in your bank will now show how many are in your bank. So if you have like some Kraukite in your bank and you're not actually looking at the collector storage, it all gets stacked together, even though they're in separate places, I think, which is, you know, a nice convenience quality of life thing. Items, fixed incorrect decision uh, description for racetrack guild hall decorations that said they could be crafted by scribes. And of course, they're not scribe related. Uh, fix a lighting issue with the racing scarf shoulder armor. Not sure what that was. That's got that nice new cloth technology on there though. And then lastly, you've got new black line stuff. There's a new black line chest. You guys can pause the video and check that stuff out if you like. There is uh, some returning stuff. A new selection of one-off weapon skins has been added. Uh, a new Krauk set of dies has been added. Uh, this release seems to have a lot to do with Krauk. And then finally, we've got uh, bug fixes down here. You're not seeing double. As mentioned in the November 13 release notes, the guaranteed wardrobe unlock was going to receive a significant update, but a bug prevented the changes from happening. The bug has since been addressed, and the previously scheduled update is now here. So guaranteed wardrobe unlock, unlock changes include the maximum rarity for equipment skins has been increased to exotic. You remember me reading this a few months ago, and many older exotic items have been added. Future updates will continue to add them, and basically over 600 new items have been added. Most Mostly weapon and armor, but dyes, gliders, outfits, finishes, and minis. So, there you go. That's the full patch notes for um, All or Nothing. And yeah, it's all basically condensed down into this one line up here. Uh, the next several videos of mine will be dealing with it as I play through Blind Today and go beyond. So, let's hope it's a good one, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Have fun in the release, and I'll see you very soon.